Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for bringing us to this conclusion of this Congress. And we bless the name of the Lord for the things he has done. We thank the Lord because of his goodness. And we thank the Lord because he is a great and a mighty God. We have learned a lot since we came. And we are praying that everything we have learned will become very useful and profitable to every one of us in Jesus' name. Already you know that the Lord has spoken to us. This is the first time we're going to have character study in a series like this. And all the various characters we have dealt with, you see how the Lord has really impacted our lives. Apollos and Timotheus and Lord's wife and Demas and Epaphras. And uh, we're pleading with you to make sure you get all these cases before you go. And then all the other messages too. And then I told you at the beginning that the leadership series, they go together. We have the L for love in Christ-like leadership. And E for effectiveness in competent leadership. A for anointing of consecrated leaders. D for the discipline of crucified leaders. That as you go back to your various church locations, you understand. Much revolves around discipline. Self-control. Self-denial. And when you plan ahead of time, this is going to be your goal. And it's going to be the expectation that you have from the Lord in ministry. And then you make every action and every thought, every reaction to every response to go along with the decision you have taken. That you are going to actually have the ministry successful in every little bit of what you do. Everything that you act out in the service and in your life. Well, that's discipline. And then everything is regulated according to the word of God. You allow I, the center of sin, I, the center of pride, to be crushed and cancelled. And then you are bearing the cross. What's the cross? There's an I standing and then there's a crossing of that I. You bear the cross. You are crucified. Then there's the discipline of the crucified life. And then there's the exploit of charismatic leaders, resourcefulness of creative leaders, signs, supernatural signs, spiritual signs, soul saving signs, and specific spectacular signs for commissioned leaders, holiness in Christian leadership. Holiness in Christian leadership. That you understand without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Yes, no man shall see the Lord at the end without holiness. And anyone here in this ministry, you will not see the power of the Lord in your ministry without holiness. Other people may try to gamble. Other people may do it here and there. And they may see some deceptive results. But over here, we have the covenant of the Lord that even in your personal life, even if your personal ministry, you cannot see the presence of the Lord. You cannot see the power of the Lord. You cannot see profit in ministry without holiness. That's the covenant the Lord has with us. That's the covenant we have with the Lord. And that's the reason why too, if we see that there is no holiness in any individual, we know that the church will not see the Lord if there's no holiness. That's why we remove them. And if we see it's a group of people, and no matter how high, no matter how appreciated in the church, if the holiness is not there, that's a humility. H for humility. O for obedience. L for love. I for integrity. And N for new heart. E for endurance. And S for separation from the world. And the other S for sanctified life. If that holiness is not there, we know we cannot see the Lord. That's the reason why you'll find in our approach and in my own approach too if uh, we see that there is a section of the ministry and pride is coming in and sin is coming in and being heady stubbornness is coming in and we know allowing them to minister will not be able to see the lord because they don't want to lift up the lord they want to lift up themselves and we know without holiness no man no church and no group will see the lord that's why we do what we do and that's why we don't do what we don't do and then i for intercession intercession by compassionate leaders and now we come to the p which is the final, which is the climax, and which is actually the result of all these things put together, progress through courageous leadership. Progress through courageous leadership. In Zechariah chapter 4, Zechariah chapter 4, we're looking at it from verse 4. In Zechariah chapter 4, looking at verse 4. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, what are these, my Lord? 
Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Not by power. You see, the natural power you may have, the natural strength you may have, the natural courage you may have, the natural skill you may have, will not be able to do the work of God successfully, not by power and not by might. And the strength of character you think you have, your natural talents that you think you have, even the things you learned at school, all those things will not be able to make it in the work of the Lord. But by my spirit says the Lord of hosts, who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and ye shall bring forth the headstone thereof with some shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto each. That he is the grace of God, God's riches at Christ's expense. The grace of God coming upon our lives and then the gift of God interwo interwoven with that grace. That's what will remove the mountain. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, The hand of Zerubbabel, at ledge the foundation of this house, his hand shall also finish it. Thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. And that's the reason as we come to this conclusion of the, of the series. We're talking about the courageous leadership. Now it's a courageous leader. A courageous leader is the one that sees what God wants done. And he has the strength, the inner strength to get it done. And he overlooks all difficulties and all challenges and all hindrances and all opposition. And he still says, stay at his post and he gets it done. That's courage. See what the Lord has called you to do. And then whatever the challenges and whatever the difficulties, stand there at the post of duty. And do the right thing and don't waver. Don't go this way and this way because of the challenges that come. And then courageously face what the Lord has called you to face. And then make sure you stay there until the very end, until the work is done. We we'll find an example of this in Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, reading from verse 24. In Acts chapter 20, verse 24. But none of these things move me. Let me go back to verse 22. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem not knowing the things that shall befall me there befall me there you are going for a program you are going for a meeting and you are going for a church service and you don't know what is going to happen there but it's like you have some things within your mind telling you within your spirit telling you looks like uh, you know troubles are not all over yet difficulties are not all over yet persecutions are not all over yet and yet you know that you have a ministry and then you say, although I don't know what will come out, I don't know the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city that saying that bonds and afflictions are bound me. Who is a courageous leader? After you know that there's persecution, there's opposition, and there are hindrances on your way, and yet you say, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. That's a courageous leader. Not that they are too strong in themselves. Everyone is weak. There's a weakness of, you know, weak people almost in everyone. And no matter how strong naturally you are, the weakness sometimes will be there. But you are strong in the Lord and you are able to say because I have God. He says he'll be my support underneath me at the everlasting arms. And then I have Christ, and greater is he that is me than he that is in the world. And you have not received the spirit of fear or bondage to fear again, but the spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind. And because you know he has sent you, Paul, go ahead and do what you need to do. I will be what you and no man shall set his hand upon you to hurt you. That's why you are able to say, None of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself so that i might finish my course with joy and the ministry which i've received of the lord jesus to testify of the gospel of the grace of god and that's the courage the lord is expecting us to have we're building jesus said upon this rock i build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and while you are building building with christ and building with the word of the lord commending the people unto god unto the word of god which is able to build them up 
while you are doing that building like Nehemiah, you'll have some challenges, you'll have some opposition. But it is a courage to continue in spite of the opposition and not minding the opposition and not minding the contradictions. Understanding that the Lord has called you to build a church, a church that is family centered and focused on the foundation of holiness. And you know the world doesn't love, doesn't appreciate holiness. And yet you say, I'm going to do what the Lord has called me to do. And then you forge on and you move on in the strength and the power of the Lord. With the courage of the Lord in your heart. That's how you are going to profit in the ministry. That's how you are going to have the progress in ministry. Nehemiah chapter 6. Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 10. Afterward, I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah. The son of Mahetabel, who was shut up, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come and slay thee to slay thee. Yea, in the night they will come to slay thee. And you know, some people may even tell you some uh, supposed uh, situations, and they say, You know, people are against you. They're going to attack you. If you come back to that region, if you come back to that state, if you come back to that church, they're getting ready for you. That's what they were telling him I am. And I said, Should such a man as I flee I have a job to do? Should such a man as I flee? I have a commission to carry out. Should such a man as I flee? About, I have a charge and I'm going to discharge it. Should such a man as I flee? I have souls to save and disciples to develop and believers to be sanctified and then the people of God to prepare for heaven shall such a man as I flee the anointing of the Lord is upon me and the power of the Lord is a living big within me shall such a man as I flee I have a goal I have a vision I have a destination and the Lord has called me to do something and I must do it shall such a man as I flee and who is there that being as I am would go into the temple and save my life i will not go in that's the courage of the leader and that's the thing that makes it and if you are a timid person and you don't pray for the gift and the grace of god and the power of the spirit of god in your life there is a pharaoh that wants to run up moses don't see my face again the day you see my face you will die and if you are a person that is given to timidity and fear, there are Canaanites that are binding themselves together, confederates of kings that want to run off Joshua. And if you are a person that wants to, uh, you know, quit the ministry, there is a soul that is running after every David. And if you are a person that doesn't want to do the work, except when everything is alright, when there are no challenges, I want to tell there's a Sanhedrin that wants to imprison every Peter and every John. That's the reason you will make up your mind. If we're going to be leaders and we're going to do the work the Lord has called us to do, you talk to you talk to Nehemiah and you talk with Nehemiah and you stand by Nehemiah shoulder to shoulder and you repent upon the same God that Nehemiah depended upon and then you are able to say sure such a man as I flee and who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save my life he who endeavors to save his life will lose it but he who loses his life for my sake he will find it I will not go in and lo I perceive that God had not sent him but that he pronounced this prophecy against me for Tobiah and Shambhalat had hired him. Therefore, was he hired that I should be afraid? There are people that are hired that you should be afraid. That you will not be able to stand on this unchanging word of God. Look up here. See that thing reaching behind me. Honestly, contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. And this church is called every minister every member honestly content for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints the faith not the opinions not your ideas not your preferences and not your policies the faith when any leader is appointed in deeper life any house leader any zonal leader any women rep, any women coordinator, and any coordinator, and any pastor, local government pastor, and any overseer, and any state overseer, and any national overseer, is with the understanding we are appointing you. 
that you will earnestly contend with us, not contend against us, not fight against us, but that you will earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. And when we bring any group of workers in, any group of workers, even if you are not preacher, it is that you will join hands with us, not against us. Don't join hands against us, against holiness, against the doctrines of the Bible. When we bring any group of workers in, no matter what groups, what those groups are doing, you might even be hidden back there without even us knowing you, whether you are hidden or open. It is that you will join hands together in that section to earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. If that's our calling, then every time you have a chance to come and minister, you will think, all right, here I am called to support the ministry of preaching and to support the ministry of the pastor that all of us will join hands together you don't have any private agenda you don't have any policy you don't have any opinion you don't have any idea you don't have any other thing that you want to do just to earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints and it is to such so contained in your own section of the work in your own area of the work that you will strengthen the hand of leadership Let's see, for, look at all the preachers that came over here and look at the way they preached. It's not that the general representative is looking for somebody to lift up his ego. The Lord has lifted me up already. And it is not that I'm looking for the praise of men. You know, the praise of God is already there and we can see from the result. You know that God has called the man because you see the result. But you see all the ministers that came, they didn't contradict the general representative. And they didn't oppose the general superintendent. And, maybe, and some of those people, privately before, even publicly before, uh, you know, had some interaction with them, say, why did you do this? You must not do this. You must not do this. And some of those people that preach these great, fantastic messages have been very fun with them, publicly before and also privately. Yet, when they came over here, they put all that behind them. Because they know the reason why you are here the reason why you are still in deeper life under the leadership of your pastor is that you join hands with your pastor earnestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints and of course i told you yesterday you should read between the lines you should observe you observe my methods, you observe my approach, you observe the way I do things. When I see that there's a group, there's a section, or there's an individual, and I can see through, I see what, you know, the natural mind is there, and the spiritual mind is there. When I see that this fellow, he has a private agenda, this fellow wants to contradict leadership. This fellow wants to, or maybe a group of people, it's like they have their own agenda. And they don't want to flow along. It's to weaken the pastor. And it's to destroy the work of the church. Then, I'll pray to God, Lord, give me wisdom. So that all the things that these people are doing, and sometimes, you know, when you do that, like, for example, if the choir does not sing, there are some people that just want the choir to sing whether the you know whether it is complimentary to the message or not whether it is helping us or not and if the choir does not sing there are some people that you know they're going to oppose and they're going to criticize they're going, why did the pastor why did the pastor do that what mouth do you have to challenge a man of god that god has called to do something are you in the council of god are you in the committee with god are you in a private conference with God? What are you challenging? What's your problem? When I do something, I'm responsible to God. I'm not responsible to you. And if those people that I don't allow to sing, if they read in between the lines, and they talk to the Lord, and they say, Lord, what's happening here? Why are we not singing? Why is this not happening? Oh, maybe it's because of this. Oh, Lord, we're sorry. Cleanse us. Help us to support our pastor. So that with one hand we'll unite together and we will earnestly contend, not contend against the faith. We contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. And so in every section we we'll become humble. 
I will become lowly. I will want to follow after the ways of the Lord. Then it says in this uh, verse 14, My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Shambhalat. According to these their works, and on the prophetess Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets that will help me, that will put me in fear. Is that your ministry in this church? To put the state of Asia in fear. And to put the region of Asia in fear. And to put the language region of Asia in fear. Make him understand he's inferior. He cannot do what he has been called to do. And then when somebody comes up to preach. And some of the preachers. That I knew that could do the will of God. You don't know but I'll tell you. And sometimes I give them a message. And when they come over here to preach, and because I didn't know that those things will happen, then they preach in such a way as that brother looks like, you know, some of the things are happening to him and he's becoming timid. And then he quickly rushes and he goes off. But this time, privately, I spoke to the preachers, especially the ones that have given messages. But I saw that the way they were preaching, they had been intimidated and they were, they were shivering. It's like, uh, you know, uh, um, in a lion's den. Because of what they see in the congregation while they are preaching. So I called them privately. I said, you are there. I'm backing you up. You'll see a lot of things. You'll see some challenges while you are standing there. But don't look at that thing. Look at your God and declare the word of God. And I'm sitting back there. And you should do what you ought to do. Don't allow anything you see in the congregation to intimidate you. Now, why do I have to talk to the preacher in a congress with leadership here? And with the people that are the echelon, the top of leadership in the church. And then somebody is coming to preach. And I'm talking to them privately. I'm saying, don't look at them. Don't look at them. Preach the word of God. And be bold in your God. It's because of what we see. And thank God. Thank God. My prayers for them were not in vain. And my support for them was not in vain. And as I, you know, sit down there, and when I look back there, and I look to the congregation, and then I see something privately, I pray, I say, God, don't make him see that, don't allow him to see that, let him fire on, and God answered my prayer. Uh, that's why we're here, but I want to encourage you, oh, why will you want to put a preacher in fear? Why will you want to put somebody who's leading prayer? Why will you want to put him in fear? What's your goal? What assignment do you have? Who has given you such as an, an assignment? That's why the preachers ought to have the boldness. And then we're told because of that boldness, verse 15. So the wall was finished in 20 and 50th day of the month of Elul. In the 50 and 2 days. In 50 and 2 days. Courage. The courage to be able to stand and the courage to be able to keep on doing the work until the work is finished. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 6. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my cause. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but to all them also that love is appearing after he said that it's like a paul the apostle actually this was his last letter his last epistle and he said i've finished it now i've run the race i know what the lord has called me to have fought a good fight and i've kept that faith i've finished and yet he still said in verse 16 at my first answer no man stood with me all men forsook me i pray god that it may not be laid to their charge notwithstanding the lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the gentiles might hear and i was delivered out of the mouth of the lion and the lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever and everybody said Amen. please don't forget this good couple verse 19 salute Prisca 
and Aquila and the household of Onisi for us. And you remember now, you must, that's how, how your family should be. That the husband and the wife are united in the work of the Lord. They're united in love. They're united in fellowship. And they're united in approach. And they're going the same direction. And even in this last letter of Paul the Apostle, he will not forget Priscilla Prisca. And you know, when, when somebody uh, calls you and shortens your name, and everybody will call you by the, you know, by the whole name. And then he shot inside that name. That shows the affection that Paul the Apostle had for Priscilla and for Aquila. And sometimes it's Aquila, the husband first. Sometimes it's the Pris uh, Priscilla or Prisca, uh, the wife that comes first. It doesn't matter in the mind of Paul the Apostle. That couple became so united together. And they were united in the work of God. That's how your family will be in Jesus' name progress through courageous leadership i divide the message to three parts number one progressive leaders with the courage of conviction progressive leaders with the courage of conviction number two powerful leaders with the confidence of character powerful leaders with the confidence of character number three persevering leaders with the consecration of concourse persevering leaders we use the congregation up with the consecration of concords number one progressive leaders with the courage of conviction in deuteronomy chapter 31 deuteronomy chapter 31 we're reading verse 6 deuteronomy chapter 31 reading verse 6 if we're going to progress in the work of god we need the courage of conviction it tells us be strong and of a good courage fear not nor be afraid of them for the lord thy god he it is that doth go with thee he will not fail thee and he will not forsake thee you are going back to your ministry you are going back to your locations the lord will not fail you be courageous already you have the conviction it is conviction that begets courage when you have the conviction except a man be born again he cannot see the lord that conviction if it's very deep in your heart it will give you courage and when you have the conviction without holiness no man shall see the lord and then some people do not want you to mention holiness or preach holiness every time and every time you preach holiness you get into trouble with them if you really have the conviction that without holiness no man shall see the lord and you want the people to see the lord that conviction that holiness is the very center holiness is the very focus that conviction will give you the courage and then you'll declare the word of god if you actually believe that no polygamist will be able to see the face of the lord that it is only one man and one wife until death do us part if that is your conviction no matter how rich people are in the church and then they are trying to maybe get another woman you will declare the word of god like john the baptist and say it is not right for you the conviction will make you to have the courage and you will not look at their faces because of what they are trying to do or because of their power or because of the people they gather around them conviction gives us courage be strong and of a good courage and be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the lord thy god is with thee whithersoever thou goest and that's what the lord is telling us that if you are going to do this work the lord has called you to do and i know you are going to do it I said I know you are going to do it. It will take the courage of conviction. First Chronicles chapter 28, reading from verse 11. First Chronicles chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 11. Then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof and of the treacheries thereof and of the upper chambers thereof and of the inner palace thereof and of the place of the mercy seat and the pattern of all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the lord and of all the chambers round about and of all the treasuries all the treasuries of the house of god and of the treasuries of the dedicated things and then he tells us in verse 19 after giving him the pattern and this said david the lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me even all the works of this pattern and david said unto solomon is some be strong and of ego courage and do it and you see solomon was wise and then not only that he even had wisdom when he prayed greater wisdom than he had before and yet david said solomon in spite of all the wisdom you have despite this wisdom that you have 
put that other wisdom aside now here is the temple to be built here is sanctuary and tabernacle to be built for the glory of god and this one you can't change this one because i received this by the spirit i received this by the spirit and because of that i'm giving it to you and as i give it to you make sure that you are courageous and you and you're strong and you stand by this in verse 20 david said to solomon his son be strong and of good courage and do it fear not nor be dismayed for the lord god even my god will be with thee the lord will be with you you know the lord is with the people who are faithful and courageous and the people who say lord my congregation everybody does not understand but this is what you have called me to do and the challenge is i cannot explain to everybody and i cannot prove that i'm right to everybody and there are some people that are going to be thinking that i am wrong and they are right and i cannot convince them i leave that in your hand but lord i know what you have called me to do that's what your attitude ought to be that you go into the ministry and you're preaching the word of god and you know this is the pattern delivered unto you by the spirit of the lord and here is where to stand and there's no way you can explain to everybody this is the right thing to do but you know it is the right thing to do therefore you just bear whatever pressure whatever opposition and whatever difficulty that comes out of your decision and you say lord help me to remain steady there is one thing i've committed my life to i'll be courageous in carrying out what you have called me to carry out and then the lord says the lord will be with you and they will not fail you and they will not forsake you until thou hast finished all the work work for the service of the house of the lord you will finish what you have started i said you'll finish what you have started the lord will be with you progressive leaders are the people that lead with the courage of conviction point number two powerful leaders with the confidence of character powerful leaders with the confidence of character what makes us courageous and what makes us to really go on with conviction and then we have so much confidence and it's like you're bold as a lion that's exactly what the bible says in uh, proverbs chapter 28 verse 1 proverbs chapter 28 reading from verse 1 the wicked flee when no man pursues but the righteous are bold as a lion the righteous are bold as a lion and we look at first kings chapter 21 first kings chapter 21 as we look at this first kings chapter 21 i want to talk a little about ahab and i want to talk a little about great men you know sometimes we we have to be very careful we don't compare this church with other churches they are doing what they believe the lord has called them to do we are doing what we know god has called us to do and some of us may not know we do not publicize great men in our church we do not publicize highly placed men in our church and they are there and then, for example in one of the states in the west here there is um, an a chief and when we talk of chief in nigeria eh, that means uh, you know they'll normally get into idolatry and then when we preach the word of god they give their life eh, i think two of them they give their lives to the lord and eventually they join the church and then all idolatry and all the things that you know the elders and traditional people will do eh, they, they packed everything away and after they did that the people of the city challenged them and you know these particular chiefs said please now i'm born again i'm a child of god if you don't want me to be your leader to be your chief and your king here yeah, remove me and i'm all right to be an ordinary man and because they knew the position the power the authority of that man they just left him there and i asked uh, the state uh, the state of Asia, i think recently last year uh, i about this i about that and the state of Asia said that man is still standing and they need to remove him and he will not allow idolatry and that's very difficult but you know we don't exalt them and there's sometimes you see that other church and that other church they're calling political leaders they are calling this and that and then they are gracing the occasion and being in their meetings and they're even, you're even reading the papers they're even giving testimonies although they might be of another religion and yet they go to that christian meeting and they exalt the pastor there they exalt the preacher there and some of you might be wondering in your heart why doesn't our pastor too invite these people 
and when he invites them so that they will praise him and publicize him also to uh, to the nation we cannot do that we cannot do that uh, because we have a different message and a different ministry and ours is not to exalt a particular man i remember when cameroon uh, many years ago and when i was there and uh, the chief judge of the country cameroon he was there in the meeting and then i spoke about one man one wife and i laid it on the line as i ought to and then he you know came to me after and normally i don't appreciate you know somebody has a second wife and he wants to come and see me for counseling and he comes for the second wife normally i prefer that the man alone will come to me so that you know we don't have problem with the woman but she he came with the he came with the woman he said hey, pastor what you are preaching at this morning about one man one wife he introduced himself i am the chief judge in this country and now when you hear that and you know you have deeper life in that country and here is the chief judge and your message has actually pointed out you are not trying to be with the second wife and then you understand what might happen because uh, being in the you know in the judiciary there and the chief judge uh, there if uh, he decides that he wants to find a particular area of the law to go against that we don't want this kind of church in this country then you know that we are gone but we know the lord sent us there and so when he came to me and said that and the woman was by her or by his side and then i opened the scriptures again and i said this is the word of god that i said is your first wife still alive she he said yes i said uh, what happened he said i married her when i before i became even a great two teacher or anything i married her when i was almost like almost a, an illiterate myself and the woman is total illiterate and then eventually i began to study and then i grew and i developed and eventually i became a judge and then i saw that if we're going for an occasion with the president i cannot take this woman because this woman is totally literate and you know the dressing the appearance she cannot speak french she cannot speak english she cannot speak any international language it's only the local thing that's why i then you know pushed her away and married somebody a college fellow and a degree holding fellow and a real teacher that will match me as the chief judge of the country well i said you're chief judge here now but one day you will die chief judge chief judges die lawyers die doctors die engineers die kings die presidents die and people political leaders die people die and at that time where will you spend eternity and i said woman you know the word of god says you're in the wrong place it's not right for you to be there that this is the word of the lord i'll be praying for you that god will help you to keep the truth we didn't publicize him and then we went on to the meeting and we finished and when i came back to nigeria that man and the woman they looked at it together what if the trumpet sounds what if we die where will we spend eternity and the woman said i'm ready to do the will of god and then they separated and the woman kept coming to, going to the church and the man kept coming to the church born again and then he went chief judge chief judge he went to look for his first wife in the village and then they said she has gone to the farm totally literate because that's all she did she went to the farm to cultivate ground and the chief judge went with his car and he got to the village and he got to the farm and said hey madam and madame looked back his chief judge and then the chief judge embraced her and said you are my wife <laughs> and took her away from the farm and brought her home and removed the degree holding second wife to go and stay apart to go away because this is my wife to get to heaven i must do this and then i went to cameroon the the following year at that time and uh, so the chief judge again came to see me and uh, said uh, pastor god gave me grace god gave me grace god gave me grace that now i have done what the lord told me to do and eventually now i brought my wife back i said which one he said that illiterate i went to the farm i got her in the farm and i brought her back the chief judge of the, that, that's where we stand no other church i know in this country and no other church i know in this land of africa in this continent will tell the chief judge like that this is the will of god and this is the word of god now you church you need to support your pastor because i go outside and i face you know real real tough time 
because you know i take the same message everywhere i go and if i face challenges outside if i face opposition outside and i'm still praying that god will help me to stand and i will not change the message and then i come into the midst of my people my own brethren and then i cannot declare the truth to you and then we are kind of and we don't have backbone and we're afraid even with our own children if i'm afraid with my own children am i going to have boldness and courage and fortitude and tenacity outside there that's why you need to encourage your pastor so that by the grace of god this fire of revival and this word of truth will never die out of this church in jesus name now in first kings chapter 21 reading from verse 17 first kings chapter 21 verse 17 and the word of the lord came to elijah the tishbite saying arise go now to meet ahab king of israel which is in samaria behold he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he is gone down to possess it and thou shalt speak unto him saying thus says the lord as thou killed also taking possession and thou shalt speak unto him saying thus says the lord in the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth shall dogs lick thy blood even thine and ahab have said to elijah elijah as thou found me O mine enemy Eli ahab will never give a word to elijah never he counted him as enemy because he will tell the truth and the lord has called us to go and preach the truth preach the truth in the church and anywhere you have opportunity declare the truth of the word of god and he said when he said have, have you found me oh my enemy elijah did not change that word enemy elijah did not say no i'm not your enemy i love you i appreciate you i'm praying for you and you know you i'm one of your supporters and if i tell my church they should vote for you never elijah just said he answered and said i have found thee because thou hast sold thyself to walk evil in the sight of the lord behold i will bring evil upon thee and will take away thy posterity and will cut off from ahab him that peaceth against the wall and him that is shut up and left in israel and will and, and will make thine house like the house of jeb a jeroboam the son of nebat and like the house of basha the son of a and for the provocate for the provocation where we thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin and then it says and of Jezebel also spake the Lord saying the dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel him that dies of Ahab in the city the dog shall eat and him that dies in the field shall the fowls of the air eat but there was none like unto Ahab which did sell himself to walk wickedness in the sight of the Lord whom Jezebel his wife stirred up whom Jezebel his wife stirred up now you see look at the message of elijah and all these people in our own nation here in, in nigeria i don't know about other west african countries at the beginning of the year from the end of the year to the beginning of the year all the preachers all the pastors all the even the people that we know don't have any prophetic ministry they begin to prophesy this year god says god is going to bless our country god says there's no problem God says there's not going to be any conflict. God says, you know, the people that are on top there, he put them there, he's watching over them. God says everything is all right with everybody. God says this year, there's going to be miracles galore. Miracles of childbearing. One million children, God is having in his hand and he's distributing, he's losing to people. This year, God says millions, millions, millions of children, God is going to give to people. You know whether they are right or wrong. That's what he said last year and he said there'll be no problem and he said that days and days those are deceivers but for somebody to come out like elijah and to say when god raises up people and he puts them in leadership he expects integrity accountability from them whether it's leadership in the church or leadership in the world and if you cannot tell them that is the truth why don't you shut up and just preach in your church and stay in your church and don't get involved with politics because you see what elijah did it was the lord that sent him because these ahab had done a great evil and it was jezebel the wife that stirred him up and you know there are some even pastors that like ahab 
they don't have any spine and it's their wife that controls the church their wife that controls the ministry and they do not have the courage of character and the courage of conviction to know here is what to do if their wife said my dear why would you do that okay what's your suggestion my dear that sister so and so is coming from our village is you know one of our be gentle with her that brother so and so is a yoruba man and we are not yoruba people and he's uh, having too much power too much authority therefore why don't you cut his wings because you know yoruba people in a place which is not yoruba land will be you know this uh, dynamic and it's almost your right hand man and the man will find something not to obey god but to obey the wife and then after he has done that and he has done what the wife wanted will go back to the wife and say my dear that thing you told me i have carried it out a puppet you don't have spine you're not a leader and the spirit of god is not leading you your wife is in charge your wife is in control and that's exactly what happened to ahab and then we're told in verse 26 and he did very abominably in following idols according to all things as did the amorites whom the lord cast out before the children of israel and i said this man of god declared the word to him and look at verse 27 it came to pass when ahab heard those words that he rent his clothes and he put sackcloth upon his flesh and he fasted and he laid his sackcloth and he went softly that God will raise up people like Elijah. God will raise up forceful preachers and powerful preachers that will be able to declare the word of God and they don't have to show their outlines to their wives before they come to preach to us. My dear, this is what I'm going to preach. Do you find anything there that is not acceptable? Do you find anything there that you're not talking about? Because you know, you women, you have insight, you have influence, you have wisdom, and we men were too, were too aggressive. Is there anything in my outline which is not all right? And the wife has to approve the outline before they preach but not elijah only Ahab will do that but when elijah declared the word of god and that's how we have progress if you cannot stand on your conviction then it means you don't have the courage in leadership you ought to have and you're not going to have the progress you ought to have progress comes through courageous leadership and then we're told this man went softly i pray god will raise up such leaders among us in jesus name give me a good amen, amen. in mark chapter 6 mark chapter 6 reading from verse 14 mark chapter 6 verse 14 and, it, and king herod heard of him for his name was spread abroad and he said that john the baptist was risen from the dead and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him others said that it is elias elijah and others said that it is a prophet or as one of the prophets but herod when herod heard thereof he said he said it is john whom i beheaded he is risen from the dead for herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon john and bound him in prison for herodiah's sake his brother philip's wife for he had married her for john had said unto herod it is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife therefore herodias had a quarrel against him and would have killed him but she could not for herod feared john herod feared john of course because he declared the word of god and he wouldn't uh, you know water it down dilute it modify it alter it because of fear for herod and instead of john fearing herod herod feared john knowing that he was a just man and and holy and observed him and when he heard him he did many things and heard him gladly i pray god will give us such boldness and such courage and such conviction that as leaders will go out and declare the word of god without dancing about it without dancing around or beating about the bush i come to point number three persevering leaders with the consecration of conquerors persevering leaders with the consecration of conquerors 
in Psalm 1, 1, 2. Psalm 1, 12. In Psalm 1, 12, verses 6 and 7. Psalm 1, 12, verses 6 and 7. Surely, he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tides. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. As we finish this Congress, we're going out with a fixed heart. And we're going out with faith and trust in the Lord. And what the Lord has called us to do, we will do in Jesus' name. The Lord has appointed you, the Lord has anointed you, and the Lord himself has laid his hand upon you. And we're going to succeed in this ministry. And we're going to bear fruit in this ministry. Everything the Lord has called us to do, we're going to do effectively without looking back in Jesus' name. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 20, the challenge we have from Paul the Apostle is this, that we declare the word of God without fear and without favor. Without fear and without favor. And if you're a leader, be a leader. If God has called you, anointed you, selected you, appointed you, be the leader you ought to be. And it's going to take the courage of conviction, the confidence of character, and the consecration of conquerors. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, reading from verse 20, And now I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jew and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our lord jesus christ and now behold i go bound in the spirit unto jerusalem not knowing the things that shall befall me there save that the holy ghost witnesses in every city that saying that bonds and afflictions abide me but none of these things move me neither count i myself my life dear unto myself so that i might finish my course with joy and the ministry which i have received of the lord jesus to testify the gospel of the great grace of God and now behold I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more wherefore I take you to record this day that I'm pure from the blood of all men for I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God as I said that he said now I pass the baton to you I've done it I've done my part. I've declared to, unto you the fullness and the completeness of the word of God. It's now your turn. Take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. I pass it to you now because already the Lord has helped me. And during this Congress, I've gone through this series. I've shown each by definite action and by acted action, whatever. I've, I've shown you everything in leadership now by direct communication and by quiet communication too, silent communication. I've shown you everything. How well to lead in the church, the love that ought to be there, the effectiveness that we ought to have, the anointing that we ought to have, and the discipline that we ought to have, and the exploits of the leader of those who are commissioned that we ought to have, and the resourcefulness we ought to have, as well as the supernatural signs, and the holiness and the intercession, as well as the progress. There's nothing that remains in this leadership series all that remains now is that you go back home and then you listen to the cases over and over again and allow you to mix with your blood and mix your conviction and everything within you and then you say lord i'm going with it i'm going to be the way you have called me to do it i will not look back i will not look down i will not look sideways i'll be looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of my fame who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame and now he said on the right hand of my majesty on high i will strive against blood i will strive against sin i will strive against satan and every opposition against the word of god i'm going to thrash everything and crush everything i'm moving on like a conqueror and i know lord you are by my side and you have said you will never leave me you'll never forsake me and i'm going to stand upon this truth my father in the lord has declared it to me i've seen it in his own life and like father like son i'm going to be like that i'm following our time i'm matching our time where he puts his feet out 
put my feet what he has said i will sing the way he has preached i will preach no fear and no cringing for anybody i'm going to stand on this word of god and god will help you and the grace of god will be upon your life and the gift of god will never stop in your life you will do it I said you will do it. I said you will do it. Rise up and promise the Lord you'll be the kind of leader the Lord has called you to. You're a brother, you're a sister, anyone you are, you will stand upon this word of God and you will not look back. You will not look back. You will not look back. You are going to stand on this unchanging word of God.